them over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Well, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Well, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Well, he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. And oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. For he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. Well, he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. And oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Well, he keeps cleansing us over and over and over and over and over and over again. For he keeps cleansing us over and over and over and over and over again. Yes, he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. And oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Let the church say amen. Y'all say it like you mean it. Let the church say amen again. We're thankful God has blessed us with another opportunity to come together at this time to worship him in spirit and in truth. Special welcome to those who are visiting. We want you to know that you're honored guests. And we're certainly happy you decided to be with us in our services on this morning. We'll recognize you at the end of worship services. Also, welcome to those who are uh, worshiping and visiting with us live stream uh, at this time. In the way of announcements, next weekend, the Mississippi State Youth Conference, uh, Neil sent out the schedule for the weekend. Let's make sure that we have all of our youth there to participate, and also there's some great sessions for adults, and let's do our part uh, to support uh, that as well. Also, next Sunday's worship service for all youth and young adults will take place in the old building at 8.30 a.m. Those who want to participate in the worship uh, will need to be here by 8, uh, 8 o'clock. Workshops uh, for the youth conference will begin at 9.30, and the pageant will begin at 7 p.m. This comes from our brother Neil Hall. Sick and shut in, we want to continue to pray for Andrew Rivers, uh, Gussie and Cleveland Turner, Charles Dixon, uh, Jennifer Jones, and also Sister Hervey is home fighting a bug this morning. She fought it all last week down in Florida, so we're trying to push that bug on at the house. So y'all keep all of our sick and shut in uh, in your prayers. I want to continue to pray for Sister Linda Burt in the loss of her nephew, Henry Shaw Jr. He was funeralized on last week, so we want to continue to pray for the family at this time. All right, if you will, stand to your feet. Uh, this is not going to be abbreviated. Take a minute or two, a couple of minutes, and look to your left, look to your right. Uh, and simply say, I'm plumb glad to see you in the house this morning and spend a few minutes talking on this morning. Take your time. A little time. Good morning. Bow our heads. Dear Lord, we come to you today to thank you for waking us up this morning. We come to you, thank you for wisdom, 
we pray that you keep us on our path, keep us on the path that you know we can go of, and put us on the path that you think that we know of and we know we don't know of. The Lord, you want to come to you today and tell you that we need you and we, we love you. We pray that you help us learn this sermon today, get to know you more, because you know the time has come, it's ticking, and we know you're on the way. In your son's name, Jesus, we ask for all. Amen. If you do not have a communion cup, please raise your hand and our ushers will assist you. Show, show me, show me the way. And Lord, show, show me, show me the way. Down, down, here, Lord, and I need your power. Please show, show me, show me the way, and Lord, show, show, show me. Show me the way, and Lord, would show, show me, show me the way. Hey, sit him down, down here, Lord, and I need your power. child say, Lord, Lord, I'm, I'm your child, and Lord, 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 I'm, I'm your child, sit him down, down here, Lord. to the part of the service where we are commanded to take the Lord's Supper. We find this in Matthew 26 and verse 26, and it reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray for the cup and the, and the bread. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us once again. Thank you for waking us up this morning uh, and helping us get on our way. Uh, we praise your name for everyone who was here this morning. We thank you for your son who died on the cross for our sins. You know, this cup is, your, is his blood that was shed on the cross, and, his, and the bread is his body which was broken on the cross for our sins. Help us to recognize this and take this cup and this bread from clean, heart, clean hands and pure understanding. In your, in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going through, Lord, I'm going through. Well, I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do. I tell you that I made up my mind, and I ain't going to turn around. 
I started with Jesus and I'm going through well I'm going through well I'm going through I tell you that I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do well I made up my mind and I ain't gonna turn around I started with Jesus and I'm going through they tell me that Jordan is deep well Jordan is wide I tell you that I'm not gonna stop till I reach the other side I tell you that I made up my mind and I've got heaven in my view cuz I started with Jesus and I'm going through I tell you that I'm going through judge I'm going through I don't care I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do cause I know that I made up my mind and I ain't gonna turn around because I started with Jesus and I'm going through they tell me in times like these well you need a friend well one that's going to stick beside you to the very end I tell you that I made up my mind and I've got heaven in my view because I started with Jesus and I'm going through one more time y'all I'm going through well I'm going through I don't care I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do because I made up my mind and I got because I started with Jesus and I'm going through. Man, we now come to the part of the service we are commanded to give. We find this in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 6, where it reads, But this I say, he who sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And who sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He, sorry. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Let us pray. So, Lord, we thank you again for this opportunity uh, that you've given us to give once again, dear Lord. We thank you for what you've given to us. You've given us your son. You've given us new grace and new mercies every, every single morning. Here in this moment, dear Lord, I ask you to help us to give uh, not sparingly, but bountifully. Help us to give from the heart. Uh, in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Well, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Well, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Well, I love to, I love to praise his holy name. Well, I love to praise him. Yeah, and I love to praise his name. Well, I love to praise him. Yes, I love to praise his name. Well, I love to praise him. Yeah, I love to praise his name. Well, you know that I love to praise his holy name. Because he's my rock, y'all. He's my rock. My rock, my rock, and my sword and shield. I said he's the will, yeah. In the middle, in the middle of the will. And I know he'll never, he'll never, never, never let me down. He's just a jewel, yeah. In the middle that I found somebody sing hallelujah hallelujah well i love to praise his name we'll keep singing hallelujah hallelujah well and i love 
to praise his name. We'll keep singing hallelujah, hallelujah, well, I love to praise his name. Well, I love to, I love to praise his holy name because he's my rock, y'all. My rock and my rock and my sword and shield. I said he's the will. Turn it over in the middle of the wheel, and I know he'll never, he'll never, never, never let me down. He's just a jewel, yeah, in the middle that I have found. Somebody sing hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, I love to praise his name. I keep singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, well, I love to praise his name. We'll keep singing hallelujah, hallelujah, well, and I love to praise his name. Well, I love to, I love to praise, keep on singing. I love to praise one more time, y'all. I love to praise, to praise his oh. Holy name. Good morning. morning. Scripture reading will be Mark 9, verses 23 through 29. That is Mark 9, verse 23 through 29. And it reads, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out, and said with tears, Lord, believe, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto them, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee. Come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. And be was as one dead. And so much that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his d- disciples asked him privately, why cannot we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. I just read to you Mark 9, verses 23 through 29. Let the Lord bless us, the hearers and the doers of this holy and divine word. What a Fellowship, what a peace is mine, lean, leaning on the everlasting arms. Well, what a blessedness, what a, what a peace is mine, when I'm leaning on, leaning on. The ever, ever lasting. I feel so good to be leaning. Yes, you know I'm leaning. Yes, I'm safe and secure from all all alarms. Feel so good when I'm leaning. Yes, I'm leaning. Yes, yes, I'm leaning. Leaning on the everlasting. Feel so good to be leaning. Yes, I'm leaning. Yes, yes, I'm safe. And so from now, from all, all, all along, feel so good to be leading. Yes, every day I'm leaning. Yes, yes, I'm leaning, leaning on the ever. Lasting arms, well, what have I to dread? What have, what have I to fear when I'm leaning on, leaning on? 
Well, if I stumble, if I stumble I'm on my way. Just step aside, just step aside. Just block my way. I don't want, I don't want nobody always stumbling over me. Oh, don't stumble over me. And I sure don't want to stumble over you. <laughs> God bless you. Hallelujah, we sing hallelujah. I've been running ever since I made a start. Oh, do you know that my days are King Jesus going to make my bird on Because of the love is a bubbling up over in the mouth, down in my well shot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, don't you know I've been running ever since I made a song. Lord, you know that my day, my day is up. King Jesus is going to make my heart. Yes, because of your love is a bubbling over in my Because of his love, is a bubble over in my heart, yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah, yeah. Glory, hallelujah. hallelujah, yeah. Well, don't you know I've been running ever since I made a start. Good God Almighty, my days, my days are King Jesus is going to make your because of his love is a bubble. Oh, because of his love is a bubble. Yes, because of his love is bubbling over in my heart. Down in somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, don't you know I've been right. Because of his love, he's a bubble. All because of his love, he's a bubble. Yes, because of his love, he's a bubble. All because of his love, he's a bubble. Yes, because of his love, he's a bubble. No worry, in my town, in my heart. Hallelujah. Love is bubbling over. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give him the highest praise this Amen. morning. Amen. It just simply means the highest praise. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way, and we ought to be grateful and thankful that. Oh, I don't know about you. I got to give him a big hand clap of praise this morning. God is good, and he's worthy of all our praise. I like to stay here longer than man's allotted days. Oh, and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. Oh, but if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high, Lord, and live with him forever in glory by and by. Let me hear you say yes. Oh, Glory we're gonna 
table so I ain't gonna tell y'all what we talked about yesterday. We gonna see. We gonna see. <laughs> well, I got two witnesses. Got my wife and my brother. They were right there when he said it. Two times. Two times. <laughs> I should have came out strong with those two songs though. Hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing now hallelujah, well hallelujah, oh, oh hallelujah, glory to glory to God, say hallelujah. Oh, 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 hallelujah, well, yeah, hallelujah, glory to glory to God, say hallelujah, 
we give you the highest praise. Say hallelujah. Oh, sing hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Lord, we need you, Lord. Say, Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you, Lord. Lord, we need you. Yes, say the Lord, Lord we, we need, need you. you. Ha, hallelujah. Anybody need the Lord? Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you, Lord. Lord, we need you. Yes, we do, Lord. Lord, we need you. Yes, yeah, hallelujah. One more time, Lord, we, Lord, we need you, yeah. In the sensing world, Lord, we need you, Lord, we need. Anybody need the Lord this morning? Yeah, Lord, we need you. Hallelujah, now say hallelujah. Well, yeah, hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, well, hallelujah. One more time, Lord, sing now hallelujah. Glory to glory to God, sing hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Sing hallelujah, well, hallelujah. Let the spirit of the Lord, let the spirit of the Lord come on and arise among us. Let the spirit of come on and rise. Come on and let the praises of our King. We're gonna let it rise. Oh, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Somebody say, Oh. I come, come on and rise. Come on and let the peace of the Lord. Come on and let it rise. Come on and let the praises. We're going to let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Somebody say, oh, 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 oh. We're singing again. Say, oh, yeah. Just shout it out to the head. Praise you. Yes, we lift you up and raise you. Oh, you are the Holy One. Well, say you're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. Well, let me hear you say, Holly, Holly, Hallelujah. Oh, all the glory is to you. Oh, you are the Holy One. You are the, well, say you're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. Well, let me hear you say, Holly, Holly, Hallelujah. Oh, all the glory is to you. Oh, you are the Holy One. You are the well, say you're the one, you're the only one. Well, let me hear you say, you're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. Well, let me hear you say, you're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. Well, hallelujah. Glory to glory to God. All right, just sing hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. One more 
time, Lord, sing it out. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in the house. It's all right to sing and it's all right to say hallelujah every once in a while, and especially when we come together. Amen. We ought to sing and say hallelujah because we serve a mighty good God, and He is not just good some of the time, God is good. All of the time and all of the time, God is good. And if God has been good to you, say amen. If he's brought you from nowhere to somewhere, say amen again. If he set your feet on solid ground, say amen again. And if you love the Lord, say amen again. If you love the Lord's church, say amen again. If you love the Lord's church, turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I love you. And ain't nothing funny about my love. It ought not be anything funny about the love that we have one for the other. We ought to have agape love, and that is a love that is in spite of. It's, it is the God kind of love. It's good to see all those present here today. Uh, those who've been on the, uh, outings and out in the country and out of the country. Just good to see y'all uh, made it back safely. Uh, praise the Lord. I know you had a good time and had some uh, pictures. And uh, uh, so we saw some of the pictures and I'm sure y'all are going to have some more pictures. Uh, so for those of us who don't get, won't get a chance to go uh, to these places, Hawaii, like Hawaii, amen. And, and uh, can't uh, go to the luau's and you know and, and see you know the grass that they dance with the grass skirts. Uh, maybe that's just TV stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I was saying the good hell, uh, Bishop back. Yeah, hey man, he's whole week in Orlando with the kids, and uh, somebody whispered to the other brother. Uh, Brother Kermit, I won't put it on him, but I, 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 I can't get up and prove it in line. I mean, you know, but I said somebody. <laughs> I saw I put it on him. I said, no, I can't. <laughs> yeah, but so I just said somebody said that week long uh, outing with his uh, kids, grandkids, and all of them. Amen. And I said, look at the top of his head. Look like he got some more gray hair after just a week. <laughs> amen, amen. God is good. Good to see our, our, our oldest senior uh, in the house again, uh, Sister Eichmann. She's in the back. Just wave your hand, Sister Eichmann. She said uh, she is committed to in-person worship. Amen. God brought her through uh, some situations, physical situations, and, and uh, uh, she's uh, just showing her thanksgiving, thankfulness to the God of heaven. And uh, we come, we come, uh, not necessarily we change our terminology from coming to church, but coming to worship and giving praise unto God. And, and he's a mighty good God. And I was told uh, uh, by Vanessa, Vanessa brought her, uh, she, she's, she's been bringing her, and she brought her today. And uh, uh, she said she don't want to be uh, 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 want you to come and and be hugging on her. Well, Sister Eichmann told this to Vanessa. Vanessa told it to me that she don't want you to be hugging and kissing on her. You know, she don't want to catch anything. So, you know, you just keep your distance. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm saying this, and I say to Vanessa. So, in other words, you want to get all the kisses and the hug that was going to. Uh, Sister Eichmann, you want to all the, so Vanessa, she agreed. So all the hugs and the kisses you're going to give, Sister Eichmann, give it to Vanessa. 
<laughs> I give them to Vanessa. Amen, amen, amen. Good to have those on our live screen. And uh, 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 those who are guests in the house today, we appreciate your presence. And, and uh, certainly we're rejoicing over uh, Chris putting the Lord on the baptism. Uh, becoming a member of the body of Christ, the church of Christ. And, and uh, uh, we're going to give him his baptismal certificate um, at, at the end of the service. But uh, I, I was very impressed with him and talking with him and very, uh, uh, just in the word, you know, he's in the word. And I, I just, his, his eagerness to learn and his willingness to obey. Yeah, and he had his mother there, uh, brother with Sister Badenfield had the class with him and, and uh, he obeyed and his mother was, uh, he invited his mother to come and she came uh, over and uh, we just thank him for uh, the Lord adding you know to the church the church said in Acts 2 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should uh, be saved so we thank God for that we also want to keep our prayers for those who are going through uh, some physical challenges. Those who have lost loved ones. I want to keep my my sister. She said, "Put her." I talked to her this morning. She's in the hospital. They're doing some tests. And uh, my sister uh, uh, Vivian, you uh, uh, know, on our uh, prayer list. She yeah, said, "Well, I want to call you and tell you. Put me on your prayer list." I said, "Y'all already on the list." Yeah, yeah Amen. <laughs> Y'all already on the list. Uh, when we when we heard your the situation, we put you on the prayer list. But she's doing well, and I usually ask folk, you know, when you're going through something, uh, you know, you want to make sure your faith is in order. Yeah, you, you, your faith, because you see, in, all, in every situation, we, we have to learn to trust God. Is that right? We have to learn it. So I asked her, as I asked anybody about this, how's your faith? You know. What is your faith? Is your faith strong? And, then, and especially if you're going through an illness and so forth, you got to have strong faith and trust in God. To know that God is Jehovah Rapha. Uh, he is our healer. Is that all right? Have anybody experienced God being Jehovah Rapha? Amen. We're going to get our um, uh, media, media, we gonna eventually we're gonna get the other screen, so y'all just be patient. You we ain't always had this, you know. Praise the Lord. Be patient. And uh this screen over here is big enough for the time being that you can just look everybody from both sides can look over at this one. Amen. And uh, if you have a heart of hearing, I just raise the volume on my voice. But if you got good eyesight, <laughs> is that all right? Amen. Now my son said something. Um, want to hold me to what I said in the family gathering yeah, on yesterday. I told him I wasn't going to be long. And he said, I'm going to hold you to that. But little did he know uh, that that is what? Relative. Longer than what? <laughs> I, I say this, it won't be one of my longest sermons. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I, I was going to say, we're going to get a camera. Uh, we've been talking about it, but we're definitely going to get a camera that will scan the audience. Because I, I want y'all to see. I, I want you to see yourselves, too, you know. And, and uh, he's going to have control of that camera. And so we're, we're going to make sure that he don't scan somebody that's asleep. Uh, we're going to scan somebody that's, you know, just excited about being in worship. Uh, so excited. Amen. We had a sister who was so excited. Uh, last Sunday, we had some guests over here, and she had gotten, because I don't call her no name, but uh, she did our Bible, ladies' Bible class, and uh, 
and she was up praising God. So, and the couple that was out of town from another congregation, they kept looking over there at them. Like, they, you know, this is something that's strange to them. You know, they, they, a lot of people in the church think you ought to need to be sophisticated. And, you know, you don't uh, get too emotional about worship, but, you know, folk don't know what you God have taken, uh, that what you've been through and how God, they experience the goodness of God. Amen, amen. And so we thank, uh, uh, thank God for this congregation. But I want you, I want y'all to see my grandson. That's why I yeah, put the camera on him. He, he's so involved in worship. And he's so involved. It's your spirit is in worship. He's clapping his hands and singing his song. And we were at the house and they were playing a spiritual song. And he was going right along with it. We couldn't understand. But we know he was following the song because when he got to the home, he said, mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he hummed right along with the song. <laughs> Amen. How many about your Bibles today? Raise your Bibles high. Amen. Amen. You need to. Have your Bibles. Now, raise all the red Bibles, all your red Bibles. Okay, I see. I, okay, yeah. Okay, all right. I can't see. Some of these Bibles got a cover on them. I can't see whether they read them. <laughs> the scripture reading, I turn to the scripture reading that was read in your hearing. Uh, we, we're picking back and off of, you know, this series and in the uh, found in Mark chapter 9 um, it says beginning with verse 23 Jesus said unto him if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe it and straightway the father of the child cried out and said uh, 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 with tears Lord I believe help thine uh, help thou rather mine unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, uh, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore came out of him and he was one dead in so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can uh, come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Is that in your Bibles? Let us pray. Our Father and our God is once again that we come before your throne of grace. That we come with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise on our lips. For you are worthy to be praised. We're thankful most of all for Jesus Christ who gave his life that we might have life, we're thankful for the church of Christ, which he purchased with his own blood. We're thankful for the gospel of Christ, which indeed has the power to save the whole world. And Father, we are thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us, who teaches us, who guides us, shows us things to come, bring back to remembrance the things that we have studied, but also gives us the power to be victorious in life. Father, we ask now that we allow your word to have free course in our hearts, that we will receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. Use me, Father, as a vessel to proclaim your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' holy name that we ask the Lord. Let the church say, Amen, Amen, Amen. In verse number 28 
of this chapter. The disciples asked the question, why could not we cast them out? They asked him why we couldn't do it. And Jesus referred, uh, answered by saying, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And we found uh, in the Matthew 17, my son got posted on his face because he see me coming down. <laughs> that this can refers uh, to unbelief. Um, the disciples had both belief and unbelief. And so he was saying to them that uh, this kind of unbelief required something else. Uh, and I mentioned to you there are uh, three forms of unbelief. Uh, one is class ignorance. Two is disbelief. And three is natural unbelief. Uh, we found that in uh, ignorance that it is a form of unbelief. But ignorance can be solved or addressed by knowledge, by truth. It's just that a person just don't know because they haven't been taught. And once they are taught, then they know and they can obey. And a lot of folk are just ignorant. They are ignorant of, of, of salvation. They are ignorant of God's means of, 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 of counting us righteousness, of counting us righteous, rather, they're just ignorant of God's will and God's word. That's why teaching is necessary. Jesus said in John 6, 44, that all shall be taught of God. And every one that heard and learned of the Father, then they are able to come unto him. And so ignorance is easy to help a person who is, that doesn't know, especially if they are receptive to the word of God. Uh, God just got a way of getting honest seekers together with honest teachers. Amen. He just got a way. I know that's right because in Acts chapter 8, you have the Ethiopian eunuch who had all been all had gone all the way to worship, and he was coming back. He didn't understand what he was reading, and God uh, sent Peter, who was having a, a gospel campaign over there in Samaria, successful gospel campaign, to go and meet with this man, a man that was traveling back from worship, a man to explain to him the way of the Lord more perfectly. He got an honest seeker with an honest teacher. And God just got away. He just got away. You know, and sometimes people come by and they just drop in. You know, as, curiously, I, what, 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 what brought you to here? He said, I'm just dropping in. So you have relatives? No. no. Friend? No. no. You see, but God got a way. If you are a seeker for truth, he got a way of, uh, of connecting you with a teacher of truth. Is that all right? But you got to be a seeker. You can't be a know-it-all. I already know. No, no. You have to be humble enough to be taught. And so, uh, but then this idea of disbelief is a, a little bit harder. 
Yeah, it's a little bit harder. When folk are in the unbelief of disbelief, uh, they have been so traditionalized that it's hard for them to receive truth. Amen. Traditionalized. We dealt with uh, how Jesus had uh, dealt with uh, uh, those uh, Pharisees over there in Mark 7, how they, they, they were so traditionalized. Jesus had to tell them, said, in vain do you worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of me. And they, they say something about tradition. You're so caught up in your tradition of what you've been taught and what you've been brought up on that it's hard for you it just it, it, to believe. And I mentioned about the one church. Yeah, folk, because we live in a culture of denominationalism, it's hard for some folk to believe, they have disbelief. I can't believe there is but one. Amen. I, I just can't believe. And we and, and when we point it out in Isaiah 2, it talks about the Lord's house being one house. And, and, and it referred to as it. Yeah, we'll go up to the Lord's house and he shall teach us his ways which shall walk in his path for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of God from Jerusalem. And then Mark 4 and verses, uh, I think it's verse 1 as well. Um, about, uh, what is it that called? Not Mark, but um, uh, Michael. Michael chapter 4 talks about it. Only one. We went to Daniel chapter 2. I'm just kind of track, backtracking a little bit. Daniel chapter 2 says, The God of heaven shall raise up a kingdom uh, uh, that shall never be destroyed. And it, 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 amen. Referring to as only one. And then Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, all for me with, he says, Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. And then Ephesians 5, you see it, 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 it. Now you can't miss it. And you can't say it is the same as them. So there's only one, and as the Bible says, one body, and that body is the church, and that church is the church of Christ. You can't miss it. But if you're in disbelief, you, 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 you can't or you won't. Amen. That's a, those, those Pharisees, they were, they were in disbelief in talking to Jesus. And they would not accept only one. And so what I want to do today, just for the next few minutes, I want to get into, I know y'all want me to get into the natural unbelief, but I, I got to stay with a little of this uh, yeah, do do one more on disbelief. Well, folk uh, don't believe there is one baptism. On the subject of baptism, you have many who are in disbelief. Disbelief. And even in the church, they're in the church, the one church, but they have disbelief in that they really can't believe that they born. So they are quiet on the dim. I hear your quietness. They, they don't say much. Because you see, the reason why I know it, they in disbelief, even though they are in the one church, they just can't believe that this, it is the only one. Why do you say that, preacher? Because we have family. We have friends. 
We have spouses. We have children. We have cousins. We have enemies that are in them. And we don't have no problem with it. We don't say anything against it. We don't say anything about it. And, and we even say, well, you know, they are, uh, you know, they, they sincere. Yeah, I hear y'all quietness. But b because we are in it, we need to understand that everybody need to be in it. Because it is what it is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we need to be at because you see, our purpose, those who are in it, by God, is to be advocates of it. No, this is the last month. Appreciate brother, uh, the bishop uh, for his uh, his class all this month dealing with purpose. But you know the ultimate purpose that we all have is to glorify God. Now I know y'all read Ephesians three. I'm gonna get where I want to be in a minute. Uh, Ephesians chapter three. And I normally get down, what, I have uh, 30 minutes after the hour or something like that. Okay. I, I want you to see. This is a scripture that we have read and quoted. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 20. It says, now unto him who's what? Able. To able. To do. To do. Exceeding, exceeding abundantly, abundantly above all, above all that we ask, that we ask or, think, or think according, according to, the power to the power that worketh, that worketh in us. And we know that the power is the Holy Spirit, right? And then the next verse says what? Unto him. Unto him. Who is the him? Unto God. Unto him be what? Be glory. Be glory. In the church. Where? Glory in the church. So God's purpose is that everybody in the church is to give God some glory. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We're to talk in a way that gives God's glory. We are to act in a in a way that gives God glory. We we amen. You go uh, down the line. Amen. Relationally, we ought to act in, in a relationship with one another to give God glory. God should get some glory in our marriages. God should get some glory in our singleness. God should get some glory in our actions on the job. God should get some glory wherever we go. God ought to be able to get some glory. Because when folks see a change in you, no, it ain't nobody but God. You used to be a cussing, and you know, the expression cussing sailor. Now, uh, Peter, but, you know, he, he probably cussed some, but uh, <laughs> a little bit. But, 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 but his main thing was cursing. There's a difference in cussing and cursing. When you're cussing, you're using bad language. You're cussing, them four-letter words come out. That's cussing. We know it. We got some good cussers. Right, let me say this, but we got some good form of cussers. <laughs> we got some good form of cussers. Well, I never was a cusser. I really, I, you know, that, uh, you couldn't, it, it couldn't, you know, I raised in a religious house, you know. And you, you couldn't do that. I mean, not no cussing around my folk. But then that's a difference in, uh, in cursing and cussing. Cursing is when you're wishing some bad to happen to a person. That's cursing. So you're wishing something bad 
I wish you just dropped dead. That's curse. But you hadn't cussed. But you cursed. <laughs> I wish you were gold to H. One blood. That's, that's, that's cursing. That's cursing. I won't tell you who it is, but uh, one brother, I told the other brother, he was talking with him, and he told him, this brother told him, told the brother, said, you go to H. You go to H. You go to H. And then the brother want to call a, call a meeting. I'm about to call the whole brotherhood together. I said, no, we don't call the whole brotherhood together because the man told you to go to age. <laughs> and uh, I said, I'll talk to him. And uh, I didn't want to cuss because a lot of folks, you know, say, hell is cussing. You know, so I didn't want to cuss. I talked to the brother. I said, you know, I've been very diplomatic. I said, the brother came to me, told me that you told him to go to, to H. I said, now, you, we are brothers in Christ. I said, now, there's another H that you ought to want him to go. You, 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 want, you don't want him to go to the, that H that you told him to go to. You want to change your H's and, and say, go to the other H. Some of y'all know how to spell, don't you? Both words start with H. And <laughs> now what I was on. But <laughs> so the, the point of, huh? Oh, Ephesians 3, that's right. That's right. Y'all keep me on track. But anyway, uh, we ought to give God glory. God looking for glory in every area of our life. And sometimes if you don't give him glory in, 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 your, in your personal life, your relational life, if you don't give him glory in your emotional life, in your financial life, if you don't give, if he can't get no glory uh, from you physically, he can't get no glory from you spiritually, it's best not you try to get them in the church. Because they're looking at you. It's more to it than uh, 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 saving souls and keeping souls saved. It's about giving God the glory. And when we give him the glory in our lives, then he gets the glory. And when he gets the glory by how we act and how we talk, then we can have an influence on somebody else. And they don't need you trying to get somebody in Christ and you living a ragged life. You in the clubs. Don't invite nobody to church and you in the club or to worship. They're looking at you. What has been in Christ done for you? And how has he changed your life? Oh, yeah, I ain't even got to where I want. Let me go tell you where I want to But a lot of folk are in disbelief when it comes to baptism. You hear preachers, a lot of preachers are preaching, you know, uh, the sinner's prayer. They're preaching the sinner's prayer. Say this prayer. And one, one uh, renowned preacher, uh, a large audience, he gets on there and once he, uh, I call it motivational speeches, you know, he invite folk to Christ and, and so he said, say this prayer. And after this prayer, he said, after he's prayed, he says, now we believe you've been born again. And he said, he hadn't said anything about baptism. But the new birth involved baptism. Turn right quick and we're going to be finished in a few minutes here. Uh, just, just a few minutes. We're just going to open this up, but I want you to turn to Luke. I think that's where I want. Luke chapter 7. And that's what I want. This is a story about John the Baptist. I'm sure you have read, starting with verse 
number 18, and it follows through verse number 30. John the Baptist was, at this point in his life, I will characterize as unbelief or doubt. He was in prison. You know, here in that text, the disciples of John showed him all these things, all the things that Jesus uh, was doing. And so John, the Bible said, verse 19, called unto him two of his disciples and sent them to Jesus saying, Art thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? And, and see, you got to recognize John's condition. He was in prison because of what he preached. Amen. He, he was telling Herod that it was unlawful to have his brother's wife. Her name was Bernice. And so, King had this young girl dance at his party, who was Bernice's daughter. And I can imagine, no, I don't want to. Well, she must have danced good. And, and, uh, and she probably didn't have a whole lot of clothes on. And she danced, and she danced. And the king got so excited. He said, I'll give you uh, whatever you want. And this girl, she just, all she did was dance. It must have been some provocative dancing. Y'all looking at me funny. I told you men are motivated by what they see. And he said, now, whatever you want, I'll give it to you up to half of my kingdom. Boy, she did some dance. And uh, her mother got involved in it. Because she, she's still upset with, with uh, uh, John telling her, telling her she can't. She said, well, you go back and tell him. I want, and you want John the Baptist, he. Oh, John. Y'all quiet. Y'all read the Bible, don't you? And that's what she told him. And uh, see, John in, in prison. He's in prison. And I don't know what was going through his mind. He may have been, you know, thinking that man, you know, you know, uh, I, I hear, I'm hearing about Jesus and all these disciples he get, but, uh, uh, but look at what I'm going through. I'm in prison. John may have thought that he should have been a radical because they were thinking of, of, of an earthly kingdom. They were thinking that, that the Messiah would come and take over, you know, them and put uh, Israel back on the forefront, uh, that they have their kings like they once had. So that required a more radical and violent individual. But Jesus wasn't in that frame of mind. He wasn't talking about the earthly kingdom. He was talking about his spiritual kingdom, which is the church. I'm trying to close this. And so he said, he sent his disciples, now go to Jesus and tell him, are you the one or should we look? And that's what the book says? For another. And, and uh, if you notice in verse 21, when the men were come unto him, uh -huh. 
They said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, yeah. Art thou he that should come, or should we should look, look for another? Up? And in that same hour, Jesus didn't even answer him. He didn't even give an answer. He could have said, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm the one. I'm, I'm it. I'm John. Tell, go back and tell John. He continued to do what he was doing. Yeah. He was continuing to do what he was doing. But the Bible says, listen what the Bible says. He says that at the same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. And then Jesus answered, said unto them, go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard and how that the blind see and the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised and to what? And the poor, the gospel is preached. And blessed is he, whoever shall not be offended in, in me. What Jesus, our brother, what Jesus was doing, he was letting John know that he was the one. He was letting John know that he was the one. While you say that, preacher, turn over there, if you will, uh, in Isaiah. Over there in Isaiah chapter, I'm almost finished, Isaiah chapter 35 and verse number 5. And somebody get me uh, Isaiah 40 and verse number 3. See, what he was doing by not answering those men, he was giving a scriptural verification. He was given the script, giving them John the scripture to verify that he was the one. I'm going somewhere. See, see, Jesus could have said, I'm the one. But with everything we do and say, there needs to be some scripture verification. It has to be based on scripture. And so what Jesus did to encourage John, to get John out of unbelief, was to show his disciples what he was doing. He was healing the sick. He was giving sight to the blind. He was, he was, you know, deaf, began to heal. So when you read, are you there yet? Yes, sir. Isaiah 35, Isaiah 35, watch this. Then the eyes of the blind. Watch this, watch this. Back up, back up. Verse 34. Say to them. Watch, watch this. Now, 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 uh, uh, start at verse number three. It says, strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble needs. Mm -hmm. Prophecy. Mm -hmm. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, mm -hmm. be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God, this is scripture verification, yes, sir. your God will come with vengeance. Even God Watch this. With a recompense, he will come and save you. Then. 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 He said, God's going to come. He's going to come and save you. He's going to come with vengeance. Then. How you gonna know? How you gonna know he has come? How, how do you know he has he has come to say? How do you know he he said here he is? Then what? The eyes of the blind. The eyes of the blind shall be open. Shall be open. 
the ill of the death shall be, shall be unstopped. unstopped. Yeah. Leap. Then shall the lame then shall the lame uh, leap as a heart, yeah. and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness of waters break out and streams in the desert. He was very fine that he was God yeah. by the things that he was doing. Yes, sir. Amen. And Isaiah verified it. Yeah, amen. Right. And he verified it to John. Yes. Yeah, amen. Because five chapters later, boy, this is some good stuff. <laughs> this is just some good stuff. Yeah. Because see, John knew the book of Isaiah. He knew the Bible. Yeah. And so five chapters later, listen what Isaiah said. Uh, did, I, did I call the verse chapter? Uh, Isaiah chapter what? 40. 40. 40. And verse what? Three, three or one. Uh, 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 three. Just uh, start three. The voice of him. The voice of him. That crieth. That crieth. In the wilderness. In the wilderness prepare prepare ye the way of, of the Lord, Lord make, straight make straight his in the desert, uh, in the desert a and the highway for, for our God. God every valley shall be exalted every mountain see John this is what John came preaching yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. so John knew the word yeah. So five chapters later, John was able to read what he said in Matthew chapter 3 about he being the one that prepared the way. What I'm saying is, it was verified by the word. Jesus didn't have to give him and say, well, I'm the one. He gave him scriptural proof and verification. That's what we have to have. Scripture proof and verification. Now, now he said a lot of good things about John. Then he said a lot of good things about John. But notice, going back uh, to uh, what he said about John, you know, what chapter was that? Uh, in Luke. See, all the stuff he said about John and what he said and what he did was after those new disciples left. Somebody said, why, why couldn't he have said it when John, when those disciples was there? <laughs> but he didn't want John to get the impression, amen, uh, uh, that, uh, and, and uh, I'll get the impression uh, that, uh, you know, you know, it's hard when you start complimenting folk. Some folk can't take it, can't put it in the right context. So John did all his praise, Jesus did all his praising about John after they left. And then when you look down, I'm, I'm getting ready to close some. When you look down, watch this. When you look down in, in Luke, you see what he said, uh, or some things he said about John. And I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to get into the other part. In verse 28, watch this. For I say unto you, I say unto you among, those among those that are born of women, are born of women there, is not a greater prophet there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Than John the Baptist. But, he, but that he, he, that's what I preach in there, but I, can't, I don't have time. But he that what? Is least, least in, the kingdom of God in the kingdom of God is greater, is greater than, than he. The kingdom and the church is the same thing. But the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Why? Because John didn't get an opportunity to be in the kingdom of God. He lived on the other side. And the kingdom was established after the death of Christ. Y'all still here? And so he complimented him. But then notice what he says. And all the people heard him. Who is referring to? All the people heard him. All the people heard him. Who's the him referring to? John. He's referring back to John. All the people heard him. Watch this. 
Go and read. And the publicans. And the publicans. Justified God. Justified God. Being baptized. Being baptized. With the baptism of John. With the baptism of John. Let me break that down for you. The word justification. By them, the publicans, those are, you know, considered the outcasts. And, and you know, they, they justified God. How did they justify God? They were saying, God, you're right. You're right in what you say. We're all sinners. You, you're right. And see, John was preaching this. And they justified God by being baptized of John. Because John was preaching that the kingdom of heaven is his hand. And John was preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. That, that, that's what John was preaching. Some are saying the baptism is just a baptism. No, he was preaching for baptism for the remission of sin. You look at Mark 9, I mean Mark 1. And so they justified. They, that by submitting to John's baptism, they justified God. They were saying, God, you're right. But then watch these religious folk. Didn't know it all, folk. The folk you can't tell nothing. Folk, folk know the Bible. Folk, the amen. Watch this. This is where your disbelief come in. They were of disbelief. And they were Pharisees. And they were lawyers. One was interpreting the law. But the publicans, they justified God by sending John Baptist. But then watch this. These folk of disbelief. Religious folk. Y'all follow me? But the Pharisees and, and the lawyers rejected, rejected the counsel of God. The counsel of God against themselves. Against themselves. Being not, how did they reject the counsel of God against themselves? Being not baptized. Being not baptized of him. Of him. Of John. They rejected the counsel of God by not being baptized of him. That him is wearing the job. They reject the counsel of God by not being baptized. Now I'm going to go to my seat. Where did they get the counsel of God? Where did they get the counsel of God? From John, who was a preacher. Yes, sir. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Every preacher, when he preaches the word, yeah. if he's a gospel preacher, yeah, preacher, he's preaching the counsel of God. Amen. Amen. Right. And what puzzles me is that we do some very significant things in our lives. And we never see, I'm talking in church now, the counsel of God. Where are you going to get the counsel of God? From the man of God who preaches the word of God. He gives you counsel. You don't decide on your own. Now your folk tell me, hey, well, I can serve God at home just as much as I can come at that. No. No, you haven't received the counsel of God. Right, right. Amen. And that's the counsel coming from the preacher. Right. Amen. Amen. I, I, don't, I don't need to come to in person. I said, boy, y'all getting quiet. Y'all want me to go and close this thing now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> y'all want me to go and close this thing. That's how you're going to get the counsel of God. He's using the word of God. Amen. I don't need him. Okay, hold on. I just need them to read. I don't need them to see y'all. 
Amen. And so why do we do a very important, significant thing and you don't seek the counsel of God? You're not seeking the counsel of God when it comes to dating. You're not seeking the counsel of God. You're not seeking the counsel of God when it comes to marriage. You're not seeking the counsel of God. You don't need the counsel of God. You're not seeking the counsel of God when, it, when, it, when there's a job at, you, you don't need the counsel of God. You don't not, you, you're seeking the counsel of God when it comes to being a student at a university that is, uh, 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 what's it called, uh, uh, you, that don't believe in God. You're not seeking the counsel of God. That's why you seek counsel of God and the way you get the counsel of God is through the preacher, the gospel preacher or those who are teachers, mature teachers of the word of God. And so they rejected the counsel of God. I have folk all the time who reject the counsel. You know, sometimes I just, well, you go on. I'm just trying to give you some counsel that's going to help your life. To help you get to heaven. Amen. And it's the counsel of God. Yes, but I wish I had time, but I ain't got time. Because I told my son I was going to preach long. And uh, I told him I told him I to preach long. But the preacher can repent too, can <laughs> but, 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 uh, let, let me hit these folks that uh, won't, won't come to in in person worship. Let me let me talk to you. Talk to you a minute. See, when I encourage you to come to in person worship, coming together, you don't decide that not coming together is what you're gonna do. Because when I'm encourage you to come together in person worship. I'm giving you the counsel of God. Because God counsels, as Acts 20 and verses 7, it said, upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together, I'm giving you the counsel of God. God wants us to come together. And then when you look over at the Lord's Supper, Peter, uh, uh, Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians 11, is that right? He said that when you come together, is it not for the purpose of partaking the Lord's Supper? What is that coming together for? It's for partaking of the Lord's Supper. That's one of the things. Now, don't, don't get upset that we don't bring you the Lord's Supper. We just, we just do that, you know, especially when you're sick. It's not necessary. But God wants us to come together and partake of. And you can't do that sitting at home. Just follow those words together. Let me close. Let me close. What they did, they rejected. The counsel of God by not being baptized of John. There's a difference between John's baptism and the Great Commission baptism. God has always had baptism as a part of his plan. He always had baptism. I don't know how these preachers miss it. He's always had baptism. He had baptism during the days of Noah. He had baptism uh, uh, during the Mosaic dispensation. In 1 Corinthians, I think, verse 10, where they all were baptized in the cloud and see you on this passage. And he has baptism today. The difference between John's baptism and the Great Commission baptism, John's baptism didn't put you in anything. See, John baptism didn't put you in because, see, they were already the children of God. They were already children of God, the Jews. John's baptism was for the remission of sin and all the stuff they've done. It was already in by natural birth. But, but the Great Commission baptism 
Not only is for the remission of your sins, but it puts you into something. It, it enables you to become somebody. It enables you to become a child of God. According to Galatians chapter 3 uh, and what, verse 24, somewhere in there. For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For many of you have been baptized in the Christ. Put on Christ. Neither Jew nor Greek, nor bond nor free, male nor female, but we all are one in Christ. And Jesus said, He that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. Not only does the baptism save you, it, it gives you the remission of your sins and puts you in the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. But these folk, like some folk today, rejecting, they're rejecting the counsel of God. How are they rejecting by not being baptized in water for the remission of sins in order to become a member of the Church of Christ? Stand on your feet, I'm through. I apologize for. Uh, not being as long. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but I want us to get it. Because when we get it and understand that I'm a child of God, I'm a member of the body of Christ, that I am covered, that you ought to want everybody. Amen. Everybody. Anybody that you come in contact with, that you cross paths with, to understand about the kingdom of God, about the church, and about baptism. I want everybody to know. Because when we do that, we're giving God the glory. Giving God the glory, child of God. Because listen, 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 listen. All of us are leaving here. And when we leave, we're going to leave everything. Ain't no need to ask a question how much did he left. He left it all. Because everything we have is simply on loan by God. And we just to be good students. Yeah. So I don't know what your song is. But the way we come to Christ. It's by hearing the gospel, believing the same, repenting of sins, confess Christ to be the Son of God, then being baptized in water for the remission of sin. And the Lord will add you to his church by the Christ. There was only one back then. Now, are you going to reject the counsel of God? His counsel is you need to be baptized. Counsel is that you need to repent. Counsel is that you need to confess Christ. Then based on that confession, we we'll baptize you. That's God's counsel. There's a counsel to everybody. There's a counsel to everybody. And then live a faithful life to him. He will tell you, well done. Good and faithful servant. It ain't about who you please if you don't please him. Praise the Lord. You, you can please your, your, I won't go into that, but anyway, it, the point is, please him. Give him a good pepper song. There's a fountain free tears yeah. for you. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. He yeah. will let us say, yeah. oh, this is your opportunity to come. To his is calling. Will you come? Will you receive the counsel of God? You come over to the fountain free. And will you come? You come over tears for you and me. Well, 
thirsty soul, his soul will give the welcome call. There is a fountain open for all. And will you come? Will you come? Don't be ashamed to come. Don't be afraid to come. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. Well, tis for you and me. Well, thirsty soul, his soul. Well, hear the welcome call. You may be there is a fountain open for all. Let's give the man of God a love deposit for that godly counsel. Thank you, Pitt, for doing another outstanding, outstanding job on uh, this morning. I have a thank you card here I want to share with the congregation. It says, thank you for your condolences. Please continue to pray for us as we move forward. Uh, thank you for thinking of, of our family during this difficult time. Love uh, the Bird family. We want to continue to pray for them for sure. All right, at this time, we want to uh, ask if he would, Christopher Moncure, uh, to come forward to receive his baptismal certificate. Let's give him a love deposit as he makes his way toward the front. All right, all right, all right. All right, Chris, all right, man. We know that we are rejoicing, heaven is rejoicing over your decision you made to put the Christ on in baptism. And we want to present you with your baptismal certificate, which gives you a record of your new birth uh, in Christ. Uh, and we also give a Bible, a whole library of books we already got. And I see you got all the tabs in the books and, and uh, uh, New King James, but this is uh, uh, Old King James you can compare. And we want to give that to you as a gift as you continue your study. Uh, of God's word. Um, I did give you your pack. But we're now, what we're doing now, and I, I, gave, it, I gave it to him as a baptismal uh, uh, celebration. And this is a welcome book. And in that book, we have what our Bible class is about, and also a welcome letter, and also all the correspondence courses that are in here, and Brother Benfield going to continue to be with him. Uh, we've been letting our uh, new converts, uh, you know, uh, I guess be on their own. This way, they won't be on their own. We, now we're not letting them be on their own. We got a spiritual growth program. Uh, and we also have uh, a program where we, uh, and Brother Stribben is going to be the one to start doing that, uh, meeting with them right immediately after service and going over uh, the, the program that we have and also uh, in, incorporating them into the body of Christ. So we want to say congratulations to you again. You're now our brother in Christ and we are here for you. Amen. We ain't gonna leave you. We're here for you. You know, I gave you my telephone number and anytime you need to call me about anything, anything, I'm gonna give you the counsel of God. Now, now make sure you call me uh, for those big dates, you know, I mean, you know, if there's somebody you about to get hit Call me. <laughs> hey, man, call me. Don't. <laughs> Whatever situation you find yourself, call me. And we'll, we'll work with you. Give me another little deposit. <laughs> right. good. Good. All, All right. right. I have a note here from Sister Ernestine Madison. She says, I thank God for blessing me with 84 years of life on May 23rd. Yeah. It's past All Tuesday. Right. She says, I pray that he blesses me with many, many more. She says, I have some medical issues that she's fighting. Please continue to pray for me. I thank you for your prayers. May God continue to bless you. Sister Ernestine Madison. Yeah, oh. now, this, she had a birthday, but I want, uh, I want both of y'all to stand just and look at the audience. I want you to see what yeah. the 80s, 80s look like. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I want to see how, what the 80s look like. Yeah. Here in the house, on and on. Uh, uh, <laughs> amen, amen. Y'all get, uh, 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 get a little. 
<laughs> Won't y'all see what the 80s look like? <laughs> also, we want Roy and Dr. Stan. 51 years of marital bliss. He said in Bible class this morning, give Dot a love deposit for putting up with me for 51 years. 51 years, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Great example of how to do it. That's what it's all about, right? Give him another love deposit. You're looking good. All right, y'all get that. All right, just, uh, just before we get ready to give the benediction, I want to acknowledge some guests uh, in the audience that's visiting with us uh, on this morning. We have a brother and sister, I believe this is Ambrose, and Elizabeth Martin I'm from Glutstadt. Are they with us? Are they still here? They are. Stand up so we can give you a good, strong, give them a good, strong love deposit. Glad to have you in our midst this morning. All right. That's the only visitor's card that I have. If you brought a guest and you would like to introduce your guest, you may do so at this time. Or if you came on your own, stand and give us your names and tell us where you are from. Do we have any on this side? Any on this side that we need to recognize? Just give, you, give us your name. Any on my right? Your left. Okay, let's give the Martins one more good love deposit. Come back and be with us again. Every opportunity that you can, we're certainly glad to have you. Brother Pitton, we've got something for the youth, is that correct? Okay. Benediction, <laughs> John, we're going to be getting up moving. But uh, media, this coming weekend is our youth conference. Yeah. But Neil and, uh, and uh, uh, Tiffany is not able to be here today. But I want to give a plug in for our youth conference. It's coming up this coming weekend. Uh, what, first, second? Third, I guess. Third, third, third. Yeah. Third, third, third. yeah. Uh, it's Friday, it's second through. I don't know whether you got the right date. But well, June, second through the fourth. Yeah, three days. Second through the fourth. Yes, okay. okay. And I wanted us to see, uh, and I was told that Allie, Allie, it was Allie's idea of the give this promotion. Is that right, Allie? Alex, I did, did you get them all together? And they all cooperated? Alex, stand up, let them see who you are. All right. She, she was responsible for this promotion uh, for the youth and got all our youth together. And how many, how many of y'all that was on that promotion? Are y'all here today? Stand up. Stand up, those on that promotion. And the media's getting the promotion already. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Let's give them a little. You do better than that. Amen, amen. We got the nine congregations that are represented, and uh, uh, right at 175 is going to be uh, there on Jackson State campus. So, uh, media, you got it? Okay, let me just go over. They started with the class, oh, well, on Friday, uh, there'll be registration from 3 to 5, and it will go into 8 to 10. Okay.
then on Friday and then all day Saturday, we'll have workshops and great, some great workshops, uh, classes will be conducted in that pageant. Will be on Saturday night. Uh, I think there are about six contestants in the pageant. And on Sunday morning at 8, uh, 8.30, they, uh, those that are still in town will be having worship service over in our building. And so we won't interfere with what we're doing over here at Nine Bible class. Thank you. All right. One last thing. Give our young people another big round of applause. Yeah, man, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Brother Moncure will be uh, stationed at this entrance. So on your way out, let's greet our new brother in Christ. Is that all right? Stand to your feet. May grace, mercy, peace, and love abide with each of us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, we ask all of it. Amen, amen, and amen.